Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it's part two of the Necessary Clutch Sew Along and today we are going to be interfacing all of the pieces that need interfacing and we're going to be assembling our card slot pockets. Let's get started. So before we attach our pieces to interfacing, you want to take your lining, main body lining for your wallet. And for me, this, these are the directional linings for two separate wallets, and this is the non-directional lining. And your non-directional print should still be in two pieces. So that's one bag, two bags, three bags. So the very first thing that we're gonna do is sew our lining pieces together along the long edge and that should measure 16 inches you need to we're going to leave a gap in the middle so you're going to need to make a mark at four and a half inches and eleven and a half inches and between those two marks that you've made we aren't going to sew we're going to leave that open so mark your pieces and then pin everything together once you've made your marks you won't then want to pin the two lining pieces together, right sides together, and you're going to sew up to your first mark and back stitch. You're going to leave all of this open, and then you're going to start sewing again at your second mark, back stitch, and stitch right along to the end. And remember, we've given ourselves a half inch seam allowance on this, so you're going to sew at a half an inch to there, back stitch, leave this open, start again at the second mark back stitch and half an inch right to the end, back stitch at the beginning and the end as well. Okay, for those of you who have chosen a directional print and have cut your outer body in two sections, you're gonna to want to sew yours together uh, along that long edge at half an inch of seam allowance and you're gonna sew the entire way across, back stitching at both the beginning and the end. Okay, so these are the lining pieces here. Uh, once you have sewn them together, you want to give them a good press and then you should end up with something that has an opening down the middle, like that. So we've got all of our lining pieces sewn together and pressed. If you're using a directional print, like the fishes and the parrots, you should also sew your outer pieces together at half an inch and press the seam allowance open. Before we start interfacing you want to take away the pieces that you don't want to interface. So this is three bags worth here. Uh, these are the interior zipper pocket pieces. So they are the eight inch long by four inch wide and you should have four of them. So you want to take those away because we're not going to interface them. Also your zipper tabs that I told you to cut scraps that are bigger than one and a half inches wide and longer, we're not going to interface those either. So you want to take those away. Take them away, put them somewhere else just so that you don't interface them by accident. So these are the wrist straps and the D-ring anchors and it's a judgment call as to whether you interface these or not. This is quite a thick canvas that I'm using for my parrot one so I'm not going to interface this. But this is a very thin cotton so I am going to interface this one. As I say it's a judgment call depending on the type of fabric you're using as to whether you're going to want to interface these pieces. Most piece, people are sensible and are not going to be making four of these in one go or three of these plus another student <laughs> uh, in one go. But what you want to do is pin all of your remaining pieces to your medium weight interfacing. And um, I like to batch pin and then cut out all in one go. And I have got the sticky side of my interfacing facing up, which means I can take everything straight to the ironing board and um, attach it all as is without having to like reposition anything. So this is my preferred method. But as I say, you want to interface every single piece that uh, you have left. So I've ironed on the interfacing to all of my pieces. You want to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the interfacing and get that ironed on to all of the pieces that you've just cut out. Okay, so step two, attaching the interfacing. Um, I don't worry about trimming off the quarter inch um, from my interfacing pieces because um, personally, I don't find that it interferes with turning anything around. If you're using a particularly thick interfacing, you may wish to do that. Um, the little note that Janelle's put in here does say that once you've made your first one, you'll work out what your machine can handle and you can consider beefing up and using a slightly more stiff interfacing if your machine will handle all of those layers un under the presser foot. So 
um, after you've made your first one, you should get a better idea of what you want to do for your next one. And believe me, you will want to make more than one. Uh, so step two is the Paltex square um, centered on the wrong side of exterior piece D. We will do that when we get to it. So don't worry about that for bit for now. And we aren't doing the trim for the top, so don't worry about that. So the next step that it goes on to is making the exterior. Personally, I like to do that last because it, once I've made all of my interior pieces and I then make my exterior piece, it feels like the bag goes together much more quickly. So that's just my personal preference. So we're going to skip these sections. And we're going to move on to step four, making the pocket pieces. And we're going to start with the card, sl card slot pockets. So you want to work on the wrong side of your fabric. And you want to draw the lines on the wrong side of the fabric as written on the pattern. So the first one is two and a half inches, then one and three quarters then two and a quarter, one and three quarters, two and a quarter, and one and three quarters. And you're going to do that for both of the card slot pockets. And they are the 18 and a half inch long by eight inch wide pocket pieces. So you should end up with your two card slot pieces looking like this. So this top line here is two and a half inches down from the top. This is an inch and three quarters down from that line. This is two and a quarter inches down from that line. This is one and, one and three quarter inches down from this line. This gap here is two and a quarter inches down from that line. And your final line is one and three quarter inches down. And then you'll end up with around about a three inch piece at the bottom, which is your excess and allows you room for error. So we're now going to go and iron in our creases. Next up, we need to press those lines um, into folds. So you want to have your two and a half inch piece at the top. You want to have the right side of the fabric facing you and you want to fold it back so that you then press the uh, crease on the line that you've just drawn. So you'll end up with something like this. If you're using friction pens if we, as we've done, you want to make sure that you're pressing along the top here and not so that you're going to destroy all the lines that you've done on the inside because you will be upset trust me okay so once you've made that first press you want to turn it over so that the wrong side is now facing you and then you want to fold it back along this this line here this is obviously a little bit difficult because you can't see the line where you're folding it but you want to kind of you, you you'll get it you kind of have a look press and then have a look and see and you'll end up with something like that so then you want to turn it over to the right side again you're going to fold it back and you're going to press along the next line towards you okay so I'm going to press in from the wrong side I'm going to fold this one back and I kind of I fold it and get my nails in there and then make sure that the sides are lined up and then press. And you want to repeat the process till you end up with a concertina like this. And then give it another good press from this side. And don't burn your fingers on the steam. And then you want to do the same with your other card pocket piece. If you want to see uh, Janelle's instructions for doing that process, she has got a YouTube video which is listed in your instructions. Whilst we're at the ironing board, we are going to also uh, do some prep for our wrist strap and D-ring anchors. So you want to fold. Let's get that out of the way. You want to fold your piece of fabric in half and press. Once you've done that, you want to open it out, and then you want to fold the raw edge 
into that line that you've just pressed and press that down and you want to do that both sides. Once you've made all those folds and presses you should end up with something that looks a little bit like that. If you're making a shoulder strap once you've pressed it in half before you then press your uh, raw edge into the centre you'll need to just press under a, just on about a quarter of an inch on both sides uh, both ends so that you end up with a nice clean finished edge so once you've pressed it in half press your shoulder strap the 36 inch by 3 inch uh, piece in by a quarter of an inch on both ends so next up is step number four, using an eighth of an inch, three millimeter seam allowance, top stitch across the three folds that make the top edges of the card slot pockets. So these things here, so you wanna top stitch along this one, this one, and this one, and you want to, when you're doing that, you wanna fold everything else out of the way and top stitch along there so that everything is still free. So this edge, this edge, and this edge. Personally, for top stitching like this, I like to use my blind stitch foot because it has a guide which I can use to run against the straight edge, which means I end up with a straight edge of top stitching. So I personally, this is how I like to do it. Completely up to you. If you have a better top stitching method, have at it. This is why I use my blind stitch foot because I have this guide here that I can run along the straight edge and I have moved my needle all the way over to the left which gives me an ideal line of top stitching along the edge. Whilst we have our blind stitch foot on for edge stitching we also want to do uh, sew down our D-ring anchors which is the six inch by three inch piece that we have just folded. So you want to first of all you want to sew down the open edge all the way down, you want to flip it over and you want to sew down the folded edge. So once you've done that you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this. We're now going to make our wrist straps and for this you're going to need your swivel clasp. So what you want to do is take your 12 inch by 3 inch piece that you have folded and you want to thread on your swivel clasp. You then want to unfold both edges and you want to sew those together at a quarter of an inch. Okay, so after you've sewn that at a quarter of an inch you should end up with a loop with a swivel clasp on it. So you then want to fold that over and refold all of the creases that you've pressed in so that you end up with something like this and you're then going to top stitch with your blind foot blind hem foot all the way around and you're going to uh, back stitch just over the crease here so you're going to basically do what we've just been doing with the d-ring anchors and the card slot pockets so once you've done all that top stitching you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Now if you're going to use rivets we're going to finish that later on uh, in the process. If you're not using rivets what you want to do is stitch along here with your, um, your foot as close to the swivel clasp as you can get and you want to stitch backwards and forwards about three or four times just to secure that in place. And I've got my join right down by my um, swivel clasp but yes so this is the first time I've interfaced one of these and it is quite stiff so next time I may use a lighter weight interfacing but for for this purposes it shows you what we're doing actually it is quite a sturdy feeling object so yeah if you're making a shoulder strap you want to do use the same principle you want to um, sew the open edges together with your top stitching and then you want to do the other side for the strap you're going to want to back stitch at each end and mum's decided to make her super fancy and she's put some really pretty decorative stitching on there so we're going to finish this off towards the end because we're going to use the rivet press for it. If you don't have a rivet press or don't want to use rivets, I will show you how to do it with your machine. And your D-ring anchor should look something like this. I haven't backstitched 
at the end or the beginning on my D-ring anchor because I don't need to because we're going to be trimming this down to size a bit later. This is just an easier size piece to work with uh, to then cut down to the required size at a later point. And then this is the card slot pieces. As you can see, again, uh, I've left all the threads there. The top stitching is along the three folded edges. They are all free of each other so that this it can still concertina but you have nice top stitching detail across there once you've stitched all of or top stitch all of your folded pieces you then want to trim the card slot so it measures eight inches wide by four and a half inches high so you have all of your uh, you have your small small piece at the top here you have all of your uh, top stitching facing to the left from this piece you measure four and a half inches and then you want to trim off the bottom piece. Okay, so step eight is place two slot pocket pieces right sides together. Use a quarter of an inch six millimeter seam, sew them together along the bottom edge and you want to make sure that this is your top and this is your bottom. So your card pockets are in like that. So you want to make sure that you place card slots in like that you're going to place them together and you're going to sew it a quarter inch along the bottom edge and I've put my regular sewing foot back on and I've moved my needle back into the center position don't forget to do this ask me how I know so you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this you want to back stitch at the beginning and end and then when you open it out you have all your card slots facing the top and you're going to press this seam open. So the next step is draw a line down the center of the card slot piece, four inches is the center, stitch down this line to create the six card slots on each side. So I've pressed my seam open which means that I have ended up with something that looks a little bit like this. What you want to do now is you want to draw a line in the, uh, down the center so you're going to use your ruler line up one of the straight edges with the center seam four inches in and draw a line and that's going to separate our card slots so that you end up with um, distinct card slots each side so you want to end up with something that looks a bit like this I have backstitched at the beginning and start that will give you your card slots so the next thing you want to do is find your eight and a half by eight inch card pocket back and you should have cut one of those so you're going to find those. So step 11 place the card slot unit right sides together with the eight and a half eight by eight and a half rectangle for the card slot back pin across the top and the bottom edges. So the top and the bottom edges are the, where the card slots are facing so you've got your card slots here so this is the top this is the bottom your 8 by 8.5 card slot back will only fit on this one way and so you want to pin it together and then you're going to sew the top and the bottom at a quarter of an inch back stitching and, and at the start and the begin at the start and the end and then you will end up with the sides open once you've sewn your card back to your card front, you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this. I've backstitched at the beginning and the end of my seams, and now you want to turn this inside out. Always my favorite bit. So you should end up with something looks a lot like that. So what you're then going to do is you're going to smooth this top edge that you've just sewn down and you're going to press it and once you've pressed it you're going to top stitch it in the same manner that you did these ones. 
Okay, once you've pressed everything flat, you want to top stitch both edges in the same manner that you did with these. So I have my blind stitch foot back on and my needle all the way over to the side. And once you've top stitched everything, you have your finished card slot unit. Now the pattern does call for you to baste at an eighth of an inch down both sides and you can do this i personally don't find that i have to i just i'm very careful when i sew it in because i have had it happen a couple of times where i've sewn in pieces uh, to the main body and this has happened uh, so if you're worried about that baste these edges at one eighth of an inch but your card slots are finished so you want to set those aside and next we're going to work on the zipper pockets. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. All of the supplies and pink things that you could possibly need for this bag are going to be listed in the description box down below. But if you can't see the answer to your question, please ask me in the comments and I will be happy to help. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I will see you again very soon. Bye.